Hello everyone. Today we are from the first group would like to present a material which is about discourse, text, and also context. But before we jump into our presentation, let's get to know the members of the first group. Next. So this is us. The first one is Madidiana Yuhemas. And also the second one is Tinyoman Diawertianti. And the last one is me, Komang Lisa Christianti. So without any further ado, let's jump into the presentation. Next. So today we would like to present these five contents, which is introduction, discourse, text, context, and also the last one is conclusion. Now, let's jump into the introduction of the context, text, and also discourse. For Diana Yuhemas, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, Lisna, and uh, me for the first speaker. I would like to explain the discourse of text, context, and discourse. Introductions. Language is the tool for communication. People in society use language to communicate with each other. However, linguistic communication is not ex exist by individual unit of language, such as sounds, words, or sentence. On the, other, on the other hand, people primarily and essentially use the combination combinations of these language units to express a whole idea in communication. Communication could be either written or spoken or general word outside the sentence. For spoken or written communication is known as discourse, then the fundamental tool of this communication, whether spoken or written, monologues or interaction is text. The production and interpretations of a language will be influenced by various individuals and other factors to produce, to produce and interpret language. Context is something that must be considered in communication, whether spoken or written. Next. Discourse and text are sometimes considered synonyms. However, some also say it is two different things. What exactly is the discourse and text? Then, what do these two terms have to do with the context? This presentation tries, tries to explain what is meant by discourse, text, and context, and tries to connect the, text, the three terms. Next. Okay, so next, next uh, discourse. Next. Discourse. The term discourse that back to the 14th century etymologically, it is, it is taken from the word discourse in Latin meaning conversation, MC Arthur 1996. This word convey a range of meanings for a period or of purpose in its current use, but it relates to language in all situations and it defines it in some way. This course is described literally as serious speech, speech or spice of write, writing on specific topic to begin with Longman Dictionary of Con Contemporary English 2001, page 3088. Okay, several denotations of the word discourse. This course are defined by Carter 1993, First, the refresh to the subjects or language from use in particular context. Here, political debate, metaphysical discourse, and the, and the like can be spoken about. Second, of the term discourse is used to indicate what is spoken while the world later is used to denote, denote what is written. However, it is important to note that the distinctions of text or discourse illustrate here is not always fairly established. Trice 1999 clarifies in its connection that a debate is not limited to one speaker or writer but may involve oral or written exchange created 
by two or more individuals. The core of the methodology known as discourse analyzed in this last sense of the world. Okay, this is all about the introduction and discord from me. And next question to Dia. Dia is yours. Okay, thank you, Hamas. Uh, well, we all already know know about the discourse, and now we will uh, we will jump into the text one. So. Uh, in some cases, uh, the terms of discourse and text are considered as synonyms, while in other hand, uh, the distinction between discourse and text has been applied to the, the spoken versus written communication unit, where discourse analysis is considered to be related to the spoken form and text is uh, considered to be uh, the written form. Discourse is a general word outside the sentence for spoken and written communication. And the fundamental tool of this communication, whether spoken or written, monologue or interaction, is the text one. However, text is not just a product of discourse. Uh, it is the actual language you, you need, uh, whether it's uh, written or spoken, produced on the page. And text is a means of discourse and discourse will not become a linguistic activity without text. It's according to Brown in Yule in 1983. So uh, actually, there is no definitive or perfect definition uh, for text, but there are many different views related to the text from different linguists and experts. Okay, uh, the first definition is from M. Aka Halliday. Uh, which said that text has been defined as a semantic unit containing specific textual components that make it internally cohesive and function as a whole as a relevant in environment for the things and information systems to operate. And in Halliday's uh, functional approach to semantics, the textual components defines the channel and mode through uh, which the message or the theme is transmitted. Or in other words, we can say that uh, what tell us about the kind of text we encounter is the textual component or its text. Uh, the next definition is from Hu Zhuang Lin, as cited in Sen in 2012, which said that text in certain contexts refers to the natural language, which is not which is not bound by grammar, but can express can express complete semantics. The term text is used according to the study of text in linguistic to refer to any passage, spoken or writing of any length that form a unified uh, whole. It is considered by some to be both uh, spoken and also written. The next is uh, from Longman Dictionary of Language Teaching and Applied Linguistic, which is said that Text is a general term for examples of language use, namely language produced as a result of an egg communication. The next definition is from De Baugrande and Dressler in 1986, which said that text is communicative events which must meet the following seven criteria. There are cohesion, coherence, intentionality, acceptance, informativity, situationality, and intertextuality. Uh, text internal, which is linked to the text linguistic, are uh, the first three criteria, criteria uh, which are cohesion, coherence, and intentionality. And the remaining criteria, which are acceptance, informativity, situationality, and intextuality, are the external text, which closely linked to the context, or in other words, to the discourse also. The next definition uh, is from Halde and Hassan as cited in Sen in 2012, which is said that text is the unit of language use, and these are not grammatical units like clauses or phrases, and their zest is not uh, determined. Uh, and the last 
the last definition is from Mamadov in uh, 2018. The term text was used in two ways. The first is to identify a stretch of language consisting of one or more sentences reflecting the sender's intention. And the second one is to identify a story, a novel, an article, or a similar product of speech. Sometimes a text is thought of as a kind of super phrase. A grammatical unit larger than a phrase, but related to a phrase in the same way that a phrase relates to a clause, a group clause, and so on. And the composition of the larger units of the smaller units on the basis of a constituency. However, uh, a text is not something like a phrase. It's just the larger one. It's just a bigger one. Uh, it's some, it is something different from uh, similar phrases. It can be first, it can be prose, it can be dialogue or monologue. This can be anything from a single proverb to an entire drama, or from a temporary cry for assistance to a comedy's all day discussion. Yeah, that's what, that's what Holiday and Hassan decided in 2012 said. Okay, now we move to the some concept of text. I found that there are several concepts of text from some expert. Uh, the first is from Halida and Hassan, as cited in Sain 2012, where they put uh, forward the concept of text there that distinguishes between text and non-text. Okay, let us see for the example. The, there are two examples here. The first is Juliana is a good student. He is the one first. He is the first one in his class. The second example is Juliana is a good student. It is getting warmer and warmer. Okay, we can see that in the in the example one, uh, the grammar is already correct, and the sentence is. Uh, and the second segment or the second sentence, which is he is the first one in his class, provides relevant information uh, to the first sentence. So uh, it changes the overall meaning into Juliana is excellent or Juliana is extraordinary or etc. However, in the second example, we can see that uh, it's actually grammatically correct, but the second sentence make no sense or make no relation to the first uh, sentence. Or we can say that as a paragraph, it has a, it semantically incoherent. So based on Halliday and Hassan concept, it cannot, the, sec, the second example cannot be called as a text because uh, it has no texture. The second, the second concept is from Mamadov 2018, which uh, said that text is considered in two ways. The first is proposi propositionally, and the second is communicatively. Propositional propositionally is based on the view that any written text consists minimally of two phrases linked by various explicit devices. Uh, however, uh, in other hand, the communicatively uh, in communicatively, a sender constitutes a communicative unit of some specific and definable type. The last concept is by Huang Guen 2001, as cited in Sen 2012. Huang Guen, in his concept, said that uh, in general, text can be defined in terms of form, structure, and function. Structure, structurally, text is the unit of language above the sentence. While related to its function, text is the language use. So uh, let us see uh, the example for the function. So I have uh, a word book here. In the first example, he has written a book on discourse analysis. And on the second example, I'll book a room for you. Book here has the has different uh, meaning based on the context. In the first example, the books is a noun. 
And in the second example, the book here is a verb. The meaning is reservation. So I will reserve a room for you like that. Okay, next, according to Brown and Yule in 1983, uh, there are two types of text. The first is the written text, and the second is the spoken text. Actually, some people think that the, the text only refer, refers to the written one, not including the spoken. However, text could be either written or spoken, as Brown and Julie said. In, in written text, as a written text, text can be interpreted as a printed record, which is very familiar in the world of literature. A text may have different presentation, different edition, different types of faces, different paper size, whether it is in one or two columns, or maybe from one edition to another edition, like for example, magazine, newspaper, comic, they have different different faces, they have different edition or paper size, and etc. And however, in the text, it takes more than just producing the words in the right order. It is necessary to replicate punctuation, convention, as well as the lineation which indicates the chains of speaker. The next type is spoken text. As a spoken text, text is definite as a verbal note of communicative actions. The simplest view to assume is that a tape recording of a communicative act will preserve the text. The discourse analyst works with a tape recorder of an event from which, from which he then makes he or she then makes a written transcription, annotated according to his or her enterprise on a particular occasion. Then he or she has to determine what constitutes the verbal event and what form he will transcribe it in. In spoken text, the analyst may hear an utterance which might be transcribed phonemically. For example, like grape britain so will he uh, will the analyst render this orthographically as grape britain yeah hardly he will interpret what he hears and uh, normalize to the conventional orthographic from great britain it is usually uh possible to determine sex appropriate approximate age and educational status as well as some aspect of the state of health and personality from the speaker's voice in the spoken text. However, it's not customary to find any detail related to this indexical features of the speaker in transcription by discourse. And as well as rhythmic and temporal, tem temporal in temporal features of speech, it also ignored in transcription. However, Brown and Yule in 1983 uh, said that it seems it actually seems reasonable reasonable to suggest to, that these variables, which is rhythmic and temporal features of speech, and also together with pause and intonation, perform the function in speech that punctuation, capitalization, itali italicization paragraphing and etc. perform in the written language also. Okay, that's all about the text. Now we will talk about the context and uh, it will be presented by Lisna Christianti. For Lisna, the time is yours. Thank you, Dia. So now I would like to present about the context. So the concept about context in linguistics and other interdisciplinary subjects is very interesting to discuss. Context has an important role in uh, linguistics in particular, which can give particular emphasis to parts of linguistics. One example is in discourse, where context is an important foundation of a discourse. So um, there are a lot of definitions regarding the concept of context itself. Um, according to Sperber, yeah, next. Okay, thank you. According to Sperber and Wilson in 1995, context is a set of premises which, which is used in order to interpret utterances. Next. 
The next definition comes from Krida Laksana 2011, which states that uh, the context is the aspects of the physical or social environment that are linked with uh, certain uterances. Next. And the last definition is from Leach in 1983, which refers to, uh, which uh, states that context is the various kinds of background knowledge possessed by a speaker and also a listener that accompanies and accommodates a speech. So even though the various definitions are, are seen from different perspectives, in general, in general, there is a, an important point regarding the context, namely the factors or aspects of the environment that affect the meaning of utterances. So there are three classification of context according to Song in 2010. The first one is the linguistic context, the second one is situational context, and the last one is cultural context. Next. So we jump into the linguistic context. Linguistic context is a context in discourse which focuses on the, relation, the relationship between words, phrases, sentences, and also paragraph, according to Song 2010. Understanding meaning of a vocabulary using a linguistic context may involve a synthetic uh, and morphological interpretation process of the elements contained in a text. In other words, to determine uh, the meaning of a thing, it is necessary to know whether it is a verb, noun, adjective, or adverb, and then whether it is uh, it functions as a subject, predicate, or complement. This information will provide essential clues to the meaning of a text, but not sufficient to provide a full understanding of utterances. Then, according to Song 2010, there are three important things that can be used as a reference in exploring the linguistic context, namely dialectic, context, and also collocation. Next. So the first one is dialectic. Dialectic context refers to the dialectic expression such as time expression, like for example, then, now, and also the spatial expression, like for example, there, here, and also person expression, like for example, you, I, she, he, etc. So in a language uh, event, the participants who are involved must know the place and time they are, and also where these things will be directly related to dialectic context. Uh, that way, dialectic expression can be used to build uh, the dialectic rules in which in normal language behavior, the speaker addresses his or her utterances to another person or even himself, and also to a particular place, to a particular place or time. The next one is context, which refers to the words surrounding a particular word or passage in a text that provide context and help to determine meaning. So let's take a look at this example. So there's a passage here, uh, which is say that Marcosan is the richest candidate for governor in this country. Not only that, he's also a businessman and a former lecturer at one of the leading universities. Besides that, he is also very well known by the community. In this passage, it is stated that Marcosan is the richest candidate for governor in this country. In the next sentence, uh, there are many words he that refers to Marcusan. That way, the word he directly provides interpretation that refer to the first sentence. Thus, uh, the pointer word he is the context of the first sentence, which is Marcusan. Next. The last one is collocation. So according to Michaud, in 2018, collocation have their own place in linguistic, which is one type of meaning, which is combination of words that are glued together and form a new meaning. As is, no, as is known, 
every word in this word must have a uh, meaning. But with this collocation, every word that is combined can help each other so that it brings up a new meaning that can be used in general. So, like for example, in this uh, example from Michal 2018, uh, which is a phrase, which is a phrase, you are a sick, you are one sick puppy. So each of the word in the, each of the words in this phrase has its own meaning, but when it combined, the phrase refers to someone who is mentally disturbed, uh, attention seeking, disgusting or insane, who does or say something uh, revolting or bizarre. Next. The next one is the situational context. Situational context or what is commonly known as context of situation is a context that refers to the time, place or environment in which the discourse appears and it is uh, associated with the participants involved in the discourse, according to Song 2010. So there are three main topics in this situational context, namely field, tenor, and also mood. First, field of discourse, which focuses on uh, what is happening or events that are taking place. It is according to Song 2010. And then, the next one is tenor. This tenor idea concerned about who is involved, including their status uh, or uh, including their status and role, as well as the relationships with other participants, whether it is temporary or permanent, and also the speech roles they are take either a, either it is speech or dialogue, or and also so on. Um, in other words, uh, it concerns uh, it concern in who is participated in uh, in the discourse itself. And the last one is mode. Uh, the mode refers to the relationship that language users have with the with the transmission medium. Next. And the last one is the cultural context. Uh, cultural context refers to the cultural values, uh, background of the people, as well as the custom held by the participants who are involved in a discourse, according to Song 2010. It is well known that language has a close relationship with culture, as well as the value system in society and also the structures in society. Thus, exists existing cultures such as a social status, age, sex and social roles greatly influence a language. Each participant in language activity must know or at least assume what status uh, he is in and how it relates to uh, the, other the other participants. So that when language activities can be carried out properly, like for example, the social status of a person will usually affect who will start the conversation first as well as the, the age and also sex, which can affect the terms used when the conversation is held. Next. Now we jump into the role of context. So in linguistic, especially discourse, context has certain roles or function when it used. Like, uh, for example, the first one is avoiding the ambiguity. So in any utterances or text, we as readers must have interpreted a word, phrase, or sentence with the possibility of double meaning, which is, uh, it is called ambiguity. Therefore, context is very important to use uh, to avoid uh, this ambiguity so that the listener or reader of an utterance or a text doesn't, doesn't misinterpret a meaning contained in the utterance or text. So according to Song 2010, there are two types of ambiguity. Uh, the first one is structural, structural ambiguity and also the second one is lexical ambiguity. So here is the example of structural ambiguity from the following phrase. The first one is young boy and girl. From that phrase, if we do not, uh, if we don't, put context in it, there will be two possible meanings, which is 
The first one is young boy and a girl, which is not young, or both young and girl is uh, both young and girl are both boy and girl are young. So the uh, another example is from uh, this phrase, which is I like Dennis more than Ray. So from that sentence, if we do not put context in it, there are two possible meaning, which is the first one is I like Dennis more than I like Ray, or I like Dennis more than Ray does. So the structural ambiguity mostly occurs from the gram grammatical uh, analysis. However, the role of context is really important to avoid the structural, the structural, the structural ambiguity. The next one is the lexical ambiguity, which is which can be seen from the following ex example. So there are several words whose uh, pronunciation is the same, but their writing is different, which is uh, usually called as a homophone. So, like for example, the words write, 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 and write. So those words are um, are spelled different but the pronunciation is the same which is right so when mentioning this word the appropriate context must be followed by uh, must be followed for example like with the appropriate appropriate words phrase or sentences either before or after the homophone words the next one is the other role is uh indicating reference so in a conversation we usually uh, avoid the repeating the same word or phrases or sentences or even a even a topic of conversation by replacing it with other words like for example the uh, to replace a noun phrase by using words by using these words uh, this that it uh, it you uh, and etc and then the words like can do and should uh, and will to change the verb phrase and also the word like uh, bear then to replace the adverbial phrase so the following is an example in the form of a dialogue with, uh, written by a linguist named Zhang Yunfei in 2000 to see the role of context in it so do you think he will I don't know he might I suppose he ought to but perhaps he feels he can. Well, his brothers have. Well, his brother have. They perhaps think if he needed. Perhaps, perhaps eventually he will. I think he should, and I very much hope he will. So if we read the dialect without knowing the context in it, it would be very difficult to know what the two speakers were talking about. There are so many auxiliary verbs and also modal verbs in the conversation, but in fact, there is a context that is there is a context that is not stated in the dialogue that someone who is referred to as he uh, there uh, will join the arm. So the context here is joining the arm. So actually, all of those auxiliary verbs and also modal verbs refer to or replace the verbal phrase joining the arm which the speakers may have discussed it earlier. So in the above conversation, uh, the, the context referred to, uh, the context has role to indicate the reference is joining the army, which is then replaced by the use of some model verbs and also auxiliary verbs. Next. So now we jump into the conclusion. So next. From the explanation of the discourse, text, and also context, it can be concluded that these three things are related to one another. Text is all forms of language, not just words uh, printed on the paper, but all kinds of communication expressions, speech, music, image, sound effects, and so on. We, uh, while context is including all kinds of situations and things that are outside of the text, and affect the language use, such as uh, the participants uh, decide, decide when the text is used and also the attendant function. 
And also the last one is this course is interpreted as a context and text together. If we put context in a text appropriately, then it becomes a discourse. So that's all. Thank you. Well, everybody, that's all about the discourse, text, and context. We would like to say sorry for the mistake during the presentation, and we hope that the material presented is understandable enough. Lastly, uh, stay healthy. Thank you, and goodbye.